Dobre dien. Hello. Welcome to Western Voice with Olivier Vedrine. I am Olivier Vedrine. Today we will receive two guests uh, in the studio uh, Peter Dickinson, publisher of Business Ukraine magazine and Vive Today, and also fellow at the Atlantic Council in Washington, USA. And uh, I will have by phone uh, Andre uh, Buzarov, international columnist. Today we will speak about uh, several topics as uh, usual. We'll speak about uh, Savchenko case, uh, the rule of the law in this case, and what will be the response of the West. We will speak also about a very important fact. EU countries recall ambassador to Russia for the Skripal case. Then that's very important because the EU uh, had never do a lot of things, and then that's, that's important news. We will speak also about MH17 case in Netherlands, and we will also speak about the, that Trump uh, replaces the National Security Advisor McMaster um, by uh, John Bolton. John Bolton uh, is very well known, he was in favor of the war in Iraq. Then let's start with. Uh, with Savchenko case, Peter, what do you think about this? Because this is something like a strange story for, for Western people. Uh, it's just like a little bit of comedy. You know? Well, I, I would say a very black comedy. If it's a comedy, there's nothing funny about what they were plotting to do. Um, a, couple of, a couple of points I would make. I think, first of all, uh, it was the... the the presentation of the charges that we saw in the in Parliament yesterday uh, was quite well done. I think it was quite convincing and quite a, a they put together quite a quite a quite a good case, which is not always uh, true when they when they uh, level charges against people here in Ukraine. So that was impressive to see the SBU, uh, the security services, operating in, in quite a quite a professional manner. Um, the nature of the charges are alarming, of course. Savchenko as an individual, we didn't know anything about her when she was in prison. She became a she became a, a star. A star uh, in in uh, Jean d'Arc uh, of Ukraine. Uh, uh, the Jean d'Arc, <laughs> yeah, Jean of Arc. Uh, but this was all in abs you know, an absentee star. We didn't have any idea who she was. She was just a, a symbol, a figure. Mm. Now, ever since she's been in the public, it's been quite clear that she isn't exactly as people expected her to be. There's been a lot of disappointment in terms yeah. of her public statements. She said a lot of very but shocking the, things. The question, and, uh, Peter, uh, for, for what, what will be the reaction of the West in the, in the, the case of Savchenko? What, what, what England, what EU, what France will do, in your opinion? What the um, USA will do in well, this they'll case? Do, they'll do nothing, of course, but um, it is a signal that there is uh, considerable social discontent about the lack of reform. I think that the important message here is not necessarily you know, to act on the basis of the violence that they were threatening, but to recognize the signal here. This is a very strong signal from Ukrainian society. Um, Savchenko is not necessarily reflective of, of the general mood, but I think this is an indication uh, that people, there is only so far people can go before they do react in this way. Frankly, it's surprising that we don't see more of this uh, in a country which is at war, which has suffered terribly, and where there is a huge amount of weaponry around the country and desperate people who know how to use this weapon. Then you think that the West will see that like... Uh the consequences of slow reforms? Yes, I think there was, well, I think uh, to an extent. I mean, I think fundamentally it's, it's, it's a wild, crazy scheme by a person who maybe is mentally unstable, fundamentally. Mm -hmm. But having said that, the fact that the scheme was able to develop and the fact that the, the numerous people were, were, mm -hmm. were involved in the scheme, I think it does suggest that there is a level of desperation growing over the lack of reform. And I think it's an alarm bell in that sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the phone, I have Andre Buzarov. Andre, what do you think about the case of uh, of Savchenko? Uh, good afternoon. Well, <laughs> frankly speaking, it's very difficult to give one side analysis of this of such case because uh, we don't have uh, now any official indictment. We don't have 
uh, until now we don't have uh, any official ultimate, I mean, uh, decision of court. We have we, we saw only the proofs, uh, and um, there are a lot of questions about all these proofs because uh, I think that uh, Savchenko knows very much about uh, her case. She knows maybe some secret information, and uh, she doesn't want to say uh, much. She just, uh, I think she will use, she will come, and we will, be, we will see the same situation, the same trial as it was in Russia, now in Ukraine. So it, it will be some kind of theater, some kind of uh, performance, but now in Ukraine. But uh, for, in your opinion, uh, what are you, you as, an, as an Ukrainian, what are you expecting from the West, from USA, from Europe in, in this case? Well, I, I didn't see any, any serious re uh, reaction, uh, for example, uh, when there were some problems in manifestations, meetings with Mikhail Saakashvili, ex-Georgian president. Uh, I didn't see any kind of reaction from, uh, from I mean, serious reaction from uh, uh, embassies, from uh, embassies of uh, Germany, of France, for example, European Union. The reaction was in diplomatic uh, way, in diplomatic reaction. So I think that the same situation will be now. Uh, everybody will be uh, quite, quite uh, accurate in their uh, estimations, in their, in their opinions, and uh, we will not see some kind of uh, serious uh, reaction from Europe, from European Union, I mean, and from the United States also. And uh, Peter, do you think that uh, Savchenko is in jail now? Uh, I believe she's in custody. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, what, what, you think that the, the EU or USA will do nothing, no pressure? To release her, you mean? To, to put pressure on, uh, on this case? Uh, I would imagine they'll treat it as, a, as, a, as an, inter an entirely internal affair. I don't see why they would regard it as, a, as an issue they should be involved in. I think we, sh we shouldn't confuse Savchenko, the, f the symbol in Russia, mm -hmm. with Savchenko, the political figure in Ukraine. And they're very different, they're very different issues. Savchenko, when she was in Russia, was a, a symbol of, of Russia's illegal war in Ukraine, and in that, Kent, in that context was an international figure. Now she's just a slightly bizarre element of an already bizarre Ukrainian domestic political scene. And you think that will be the point of view of the, of the West? I would be quite confident, yeah. And for you, André, what, do, what can you add in, uh, to the analysis of, uh, of Peter? I, 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 I agree. I agree with uh, my colleague. I think that uh, it won't be some some kind of serious reaction, and I, I'm sure that the United States will not uh, give any kind of official, I mean, official uh, reaction. But all 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 the world, uh, Europe, United States, and in Russia, they see what is happening in Ukraine, and uh, they they see what is happening now with the Savchenkos. Uh, case and uh, the, the 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 biggest uh, problem for for this case is that uh, that this case is unpredictable. We can't even now foresee the result of such case and what will be the result of this case and generally will be the result of this case. But it will it will it, it takes a long time when we when we hear the final decision of the court. Then, for you, Peter, and for you, Andre, then. We we will not have big reaction from the West, and this is on, only like a consequences of the political situation in Ukraine. I mean, it's 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 another symbol of a political instability. So of course, it's a negative for Ukraine in terms of its international image. But again, I don't think we I don't think we should read too much into this, um, except from the you know it makes Ukraine look like a, 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 a an outlier democratically speaking. It's a pretty pretty crazy scenario for a member of parliament to be involved in something like this. Mm. But I don't think it's a major international diplomatic incident. No. Mm. Another another topics. Um, you know MH17. Everybody know that. Um, the process is going on. In Netherlands, they they will uh, this um, terrorist act will go to the court. Um, Andre, what are yes. what what are you waiting for from Netherlands uh, in uh, the case of MH17? I think that uh, initially there were there were, were made serious mistakes about all this case 
and uh, there are a lot of information which uh, which were concealed from from us, from experts, from uh, pu- pu- public uh, persons, I mean, from 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 um, uh, from from public opinion. We don't know the the, the 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 all kind of information about this case, and it is very difficult to estimate what is happening. I think that uh, everybody knows who uh, who uh, made this terrible thing, who who is responsible for for such thing, but uh, nobody wants uh, to prove it in the court. So I think that we will not hear the final decision about this case in the proximate years. Yes, this case is only in the National Court of Netherlands now. For you, Peter, uh, what are you waiting for from this case in the National Court of Netherlands, I repeat? Well, this is the agreement, the international agreement to allow the, the Dutch mm-hmm. to, 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 to try the case. Um, to hear the case, uh, I think we're going we're to move closer and closer to a more definitive, uh, ver- excuse me, verdict mm. that uh, Russia was responsible, that it was the Russian military that was responsible, that the Russian high command ultimately takes final responsibility for that. Um, that will raise the, you know, there will be certain international implications of that. Of course, I don't think we're going to see a situation where we have a, a, a trial with defendants on trial, even by, via video link. Of course, Russia will maintain its, mm. its absolute uh, stonewalling position. It will not recognize the court's jurisdiction. It will not recognize the findings. So mm. um, it will be one more major obstacle to a thaw okay. between Russia and the West. Then the process But it'll be a long on. time. It's not, it's not going to move quickly. Uh, I think, I think Andre is, is quite correct there in, in the sense that there is no major rush on, on either side to move there because it's just going to be a road to further trouble and further mm-hmm. complications, which, frankly speaking, um, is not something that they, okay. they would wish for on either side. Then the process is going on. So. Then uh, uh, this is the end of the, our first part. I am waiting you for the second part. Welcome to the second part of uh, this uh, TV program, Western Voice with Olivier Drin. I want to start with a very important fact from the EU policy. The EU is recalling now for consultation is ambassador of to Russia. Peter, you are fellow in the Atlantic uh, Council, yeah? Then you are at the top level of the international expert. What do you think about this case? Because this is very important. The EU is was not very, can I say, like very shy. <laughs> um, well, I think I think the, the, this this latest step is an indication of how seriously the European Union is taking this attack, uh, and how. He, uh, and you are you, and you are uh, a UK citizen. Then this is your country. Then yes, <laughs> that's yes. why. It's um, well, I think that it's a very awkward situation for Britain because now we have Theresa May and the British government appealing to Europe and saying we need to unite to. Uh, respond to Russian aggression and of course there's a lot of people in in the EU are saying well that's all very well for you now but you're leaving you're leaving the EU you've got your Brexit you're Mm going to leave so of course uh, it's an awkward situation from that point of view but I think fundamentally we've got um, you know we this this has been building for a long time the the Russian hybrid war has been building up over a period of the last four years there have been so many incidents accumulating and this has been perhaps the most shocking from a, from a European perspective uh, within the EU, the idea of a chemical weapons attack in the EU against EU citizens um, really opens up the, the gates to a whole new world of, of, of uh, security concerns. And I, there, is, there is clearly a, 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 a political will to, 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 to make a, send a strong message to Moscow, like, this is too far. Yes, it's a red uh, line. Uh, you, you are a UK citizen. What yes. are you waiting for? What are, what, 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 which response are, are, are you waiting for? Well, I mean, the, the, I can tell you, the, the, the calls in Britain, the, 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 most, the most hawkish calls have been very much to target Russian money. Um, Russian money in London is hugely influential. It is everywhere. Mm. It's throughout the investment world. It's throughout the banking sector. It's throughout the real estate and a knock-on from that. I mean, the, the Russian money in London is, 
is, is unavoidable. It's one of the key uh, oilers of the entire London system, of the London economy. And there's been a huge amount of calls for the British government to target that, to, to, make, to, to, to prevent Russia from bringing its wealth to London and using its wealth to exert its influence. And that's not happened. We've had a diplomatic response. We've not had a hardline financial response. You're waiting response. for that? Uh, to be honest, I'm not waiting for it. I wish it would happen, but I don't think it's going to happen. And that is a symbol, that's a signal to Russia that we're not really serious. Then that's a signal that you are not really, and we are not really serious yes. because this is Europe. And that's, a, that's for Putin, that's a signal that he can continue. Uh, essentially, yes, I'm afraid so. I'm very much afraid that it's a green light saying, okay, we don't like it, we will respond. I see it, I, I see it as a, tw you know, r uh, expelling diplomats. It's a, it's, a, it's a 20th century response to a 21st century problem. This is a hybrid war. Money's part of the hybrid war. I think. We need to target that, but we're not doing that because then it would cause too much of a, uh, too many sacrifices on our side, which people aren't ready to make, unfortunately. André, your opinion about that? Peter gave, gave his um, analysis uh, as a as, um, British citizen. I, I can give my person, personal point of view as Ukrainian citizen. And um, um, to, to be honest, for me, uh, all this case, all this scandal with uh, poisoning of, of Russian uh, citizen Skripal is just a part of big uh, uh, geopolitical um, fight between the West and Russia. And uh, when I analyze all the situation, situation I, analyze, I try to analyze including all kinds of problems which exist now between Russia and West. I mean Ukraine, I mean uh, uh, gas problems, natural gas problems uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Europe uh, and other problems. So for me, this is just a part of uh, an element of this fight. And I think that uh, we'll, the situation will deteriorate, deteriorate deteriorate seriously because uh, B B B Great Britain uh, and the United States, they are allies and uh, Russia don't want to, you know, to normalize uh, relations with with West. So we are on the eve of new, I think, uh, of new phase of a new era of uh, geopolitical fight. Do you think, Peter, that, that we are on the road of, uh, we are in a new Cold War, for sure. but. Uh, do you think we are on the road of maybe a continental war, European continental war? Um, are you afraid about... Because, you know, Putin was elected with more than 75% uh, uh, of the voters. 75, yeah. And he's, he's very strong, he feels he feel, uh, very strong. And the response of UK was not very efficient. Then he will continue. That where, 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 where we will go now? Where we will go? To, 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 which confrontation we will have, in your um, opinion? I think, well, one of the areas that I'm looking out for, which I, I, I believe will be a, a signal, will be a major cyber attack on a EU member country, or maybe America, on the infrastructure of a, West, a Western country. So something where they take out power grids, or they take out the banking system, or they take out the commercial aspects. They will of the continue. Pace. Well, I think, yeah, we won't see a, a traditional war of, of, of tank columns and invasion and you know, occupation forces in the West, but we are very likely to see an escalation in hybrid hostilities of, and I think the, the most likely format for that will but, but, be but at cyber the end, attacks at the, at the end, stage. At the end, that, that can be a, a conventional war. Um, it, it, nothing can be ruled out. Nothing can be ruled out, unfortunately, but I think it's highly unlikely that we would see a conventional war involving Russia and the West, given the stakes involved. But that doesn't mean we're going to have a, a, a peace or, or, or a, an entente. I think it's much more likely we will see an escala a further escalation in this sort of uh, hybrid hostilities. I see cyber attacks as being one logical area. Um, information attacks will continue as well. Uh, the confrontation will continue. Andre. You con your opinion, the confrontation will continue, as you said? Undoubtedly, and these cyber, this possible cyber attacks, they are, they are logical. They, can, they could be, they will, maybe they, they will be, but uh, it's very difficult to predict Russian, uh, Russian uh, actions, how Russia is going to do this, I mean. It's very difficult, so uh, now 
in, in, in reality, we have we have uh, elections uh, in Russia. I mean, the results of elections in Russia, in Germany, and in China. So three leaders, uh, Merkel, Putin, and uh, Xi Jinping, they got and they stabilized their their power, their political system. So we have to we have to understand this, this, this situation, and we have to understand that the situation in China and Russia will not change in the proximate years. So we have to uh, analyze the future geopolitical features, the future geopolitical map, including and understanding such reality. Maybe the consequences of the Putin policy to the West will be to unify Europe, include include Britain after the Brexit, <laughs> because we have to be unified if we want to face a person like Putin. You know? Well, this is one of the comments that was quite widespread in Britain after the attack in Salisbury, that if we wanted to strike back, we should cancel Brexit, yeah. because this would be That's very unpopular with Russia. Um, <laughs> Okay, yeah, I, I don't know how, how uh, you know, I don't, I, I, that's, that's going to be that, a consequence. It's a, it could be, it could, it, nothing can be ruled out in, in terms of Brexit as well. And, and yeah, but, but I think in, you know, in general terms, we are talking about a, a broad unification of the West in, in, in response to the threat they face. Inclu include USA also. Including the USA. And even Britain outside of the EU, you know, UK, US, EU, this is going to be a fairly united front um, against Russian aggression. I am sure that would be a uh, consequence. For the medium term, and this is actually, you know, we've seen this. I mean, we hear a lot about, we hear a lot in the media about um, fractures within the EU. The Greeks, the mm. Hungarians, mm. perhaps, you know, these different, uh, the Italians to some extent, you know, countries that are, are breaking ranks and saying, let's not attack Russia or let's take Russia out of this statement or let's uh, look to weaken sanctions. And w w th those issues are highlighted. What we don't hear much about is the fact that sanctions have been in place now for four years and they've remained in place. And every time they come up and they get automatically rolled over. And so we hear a lot of rhetoric, but actually the facts on the ground show that Europe is. A, extremely united and surprisingly so. So this yeah. is already a result. And I think that's, that's the consequences yeah. of, of the Putin hybrid war against Absolutely. the West. Absolutely. Uh, then a uh, few words about the nomination of John Bolton, like uh, National Security Advisor of Trump. What is your opinion, Peter, and after André? Um. Well, uh, one, of, one of the takes on this I saw, I mean, McMaster was seen as a very uh, a, a specialist in Russian hybrid war. He literally wrote the book on Russian hybrid warfare. So to see him leave after such a relatively short time is disappointing from a Ukrainian point of view. Uh, I would have liked to have seen him remain in that position. Um, Bolton is seen as quite a, um, a slightly less stable character, let's say. Um, his track record on the Iraq war, as you mentioned earlier, is, uh, is, 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 is cause for concern. There's a lot of people concerned now about his, his uh, presence in, in the White House now could cause a much more aggressive foreign policy, a much more uh, mm -hmm. you know, to release. You know, the, the people like McMaster were seen as restraining influences on, on uh, President Trump. With someone like Bolton there, some people say, well, Trump's actually now the adult in the room. He's the mature figure. Mm -hmm. These guys are far less um, under control, so to speak. So uh, the concern now would be that foreign policy-wise, we'll see a much more assertive America, uh, maybe not in, in a good way. A few words, few words, because this is the conclusion. Please, André. I, I will say some words uh, concerning Bolton. Um, I think that the Bolton will strengthen, strengthen the current administration uh, by uh, Donald Trump, uh, and he's a strong, you know, a strong um, anti-Russian person. For example, four years ago, Bolton uh, urged, uh, urged uh, United States, United States government to give uh, Ukraine uh, arms, weapon, uh, modern weapon, and maybe to to uh, to help Ukraine become a member of NATO. It was it was his interview four years ago. But now he's an incumbent. I mean, he's in charge. <laughs> many uh, United States, many diplomats of the United States, they change 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 their views when they became uh, officials. So I don't know what will, what will be. What will, what will be now, but I think that uh, Bolton will strengthen and will support Ukraine and will strengthen uh, uh, American Ukrainian Union ally against uh, possible Russian aggression. Thank you, Andrei. Thank you, Peter.
This is the end of this issue of Western Voice with Olivier Drin. Goodbye, do and remember, never give up.